My friends take four hours to roll weed. <laughs> nah, All this weed. I got you right now, bro. All this yeah. weed. Yeah, we got you. And my friends taking 30 years nah, to nah, roll you weed. Like you ever seen this before? I know, because if I had 30 bitches over here right now, it would have been got, got cracked on already. Treat the weed like the girls. Roll them up. I'm in a hood where it get hot. You know the gang, then you know the flock. I threw a high five at the ops. You give a high five to the cops. We took a fish scale by the coast. And it got shoes on, no socks. We still double up on these trips. I put a background like props. We here, we in the building. We in Brownsville. In the heart of the Ville. With your boy SO. Locked and loaded. Story of Simeon on the way. I'm here to shake the streets up, nigga. <laughs> when I first got put onto music, well, I'm a fan of music, first of all, since I was young. I've always been a fan of music. But um, my childhood friend, Dex, he was, um, he was big in the rap at the time. He was doing talent shows. He was like 14, <clears throat> 13, 14, doing talent shows. And I just like the response he was getting. We go on the shows. I knew all his lyrics to all his shows. And then I'm performing with him on stage. And after a while, it just became like a part of me. By the time I hit like 15, 16, I started writing rhymes and shit with him. And we used to hit the studio together all the time. And then from there, I just, I started taking it seriously. And then, you know, and then um, just trying to stick with it, just going through all the street shit and trying to stay focused on music. It wasn't easy, but um, I had OGs to kind of like pull me back and steer me in the right direction. How do you balance authenticity with responsible messaging? My background is Caribbean, Guyanese, so I was brought up to be humble, giving, you know, thinking of others, treat people like you want to be treated. So um, my music is kind of like um, I try to educate guys from my neighborhood, people like my situation, people in my situation, I should say. Um, and um, just try to deliver a message where, you know, you got to keep dreaming and you got to keep pushing for the future. You got to keep believing in yourself and you got to keep working. You know, you can't give up just because you're from the bottom. I mean, you got to stay at the bottom. What are some of the biggest challenges you faced growing up in Brownsville? <sighs> it was a lot. Um, we had police problems. We had neighborhood problems. We had moms and pops issues. We had drug problems. It was a lot, but um, like I said, I always had a solid kind of background behind me. Even though my pops wasn't around too much, my grandfather was kind of like a big influence on me. So he was <clears throat> always trying to keep me in line. He'd catch me, I'd be cutting school and shit. I'd be outside with the homies chilling. He'd pull up on me in, in the old school and pull me up. Yo, what you doing? Yo, uh, get in the car. Embarrass me in front of everybody. Shit, I'm saying at the time, I, I used to hate this shit, but that was shit that I needed, you know what I'm saying? To help me kind of get my mind right. You know what I'm saying? But um, I still got my hands dirty in a lot of things, even though, you know what I'm saying? I, I still had this strong background, but it, it's kind of hard, but by the grace of God too, you know what I'm saying? I was able to, get out of a few situations and, and, and make it here. Okay, and how does your music influence your community? Like I said, it's, it's motivation. Just everybody from my situation, they can use me as a, as, a, as a bar. You know, I've been through it, been in the, in the system situation, I've been in the street situation, I've been in, you know, Every situation you can name in the streets, I've been through it. So if I could turn it around and make something positive out of it, so can you. You know, and my music is here to show you that, to show you where I was at, where I'm where I'm going, and where I came where I came from, you know? So just show you my transition between old me and a new me. Can we talk about a specific song or project that holds a special meaning to you? And well, my album is gonna be called Story of Simeon, because it's it's my story. And the SOS is a help sign. 
if you know what SOS means, it's a help sign. It's like a distress signal. So I, I'm here for I'm here to help. I'm here, I'm the help. I'm the backup. So I'm just trying to educate and show them that with my with this project. But the song that kind of starts to show them that is Guns and Butter. Guns and Butter is just talking about when I got my first piece of change, what I went and did with it, what I could have do with it, and what I did go get with it. Even though I'm from this kind of environment and I got this kind of thinking sometimes, I had to up my game and challenge myself to do something better. And um, Nightmares. Nightmares is, Nightmares is just like a, it's just like a, a stage in my life where I was going through so much and it talks about so many of my episodes from street shit, you know, from losing friends to, to bad drug deals, to bad, you know, tran transactions, it's, it's, it just talks about a lot. But you know, Nightmares is definitely shows me as a street person, but growing into something, something else, you know what I'm saying? Give me a quick A from Nightmares. Still having dreams about the past life. I saw a demon out last night, paranoid, so I keep a gun. Split from my hand like a torchlight. Hold it steady, one eye open, then you let it bang through the foresight. It's Gucci on me or the off-white. I got Gucci on me off the off-white. Windows tinted on a tour bus. Trap jumping like a website. I hit the spot, I got my jewelry on. This motivation got my dogs hype. We could chill and have a dog show, or I could orchestrate a dog fight. I got kids, I don't play with niggas. No more space but the Lord might. They was hungry and they wanted work, but wasn't ready for that frostbite. Started bugging when he saw the plates. Warren gave Biggs the royal rice. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to get too deep with it. You know what I'm saying? So if you know, you know. But um, we'll check it out. So what are your future goals for your music career? And how do you plan on achieving them? My biggest thing is just, I'm trying to be at a point where I'm not looking to, I don't got to be the, 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 the biggest rapper of all time, you know? But I'm just going to leave my print on the game. And I'm here to motivate everybody from a place like mine's or somewhere like like I'm from, to know that you could do it. Nothing can stop you. Nothing, nobody can stop you. You know, it's it's all up to you. You know, you're gonna have people that don't support you. You're gonna have people that do support you. You know, don't let that shit kind of tip your scale. Let Just keep it, take it with a grain of salt and just keep it moving. But never stop dreaming. Never stop imagining. Never stop being you. Once you stop imagining and dreaming, then it's over. The whole the whole dream is dead. You dead as a person, you know what I'm saying? Spiritually, you know what I'm saying? So you gotta keep dreaming, beat the odds. They gonna say, because you from here or you from there, that you ain't supposed to live like this or move like this, or you gotta act a certain way. Nah, that's not true. You know, I, and I'm here to show everybody from this type of situation that I'm from that you can do it. Come on, it's just all up to you, you know what I'm saying? You just gotta, you just gotta believe in yourself and, and, and stick to whatever you, whatever your goal is or whatever your dream is. Never give up. Word.